era, and they take incredible care with the liner notes and the photos, and it's an amazing, but they have signed a handful of artists, and when you get signed to Bear, it's almost like you're a label mate of, you know, of, of, of Hank Snow and Jim Reeves and Carl Smith and exactly. yeah. it must be something else. What was it like? What did they want you to do? Did they, did they have the music that they were going to release in hand or did you? Did they sign you up and say, we love what you do, bring us a record? How did it go? Well, or originally, um, I, had, I had cut one song for this Bear Family 20 year anniversary compilation record. They wanted everybody to write songs about bears. And so I didn't write a song about a bear, I wrote a song called Bear Lay Hanging On, and that was the tune. So I wrote this song, and, and they played it for the president of the company, and he really liked it a lot. And at the time when, we, when I actually went in to record it, uh, I had spent the budget money for my cut on a Dale Watson cut. I was helping Dale get on this compilation record as well. And so we spent the, the money on that, and. Uh, when I went to record mine, they said, well, that was your budget. I thought Dale was just going to sing with you. And I said, no, we actually cut a track on Dale. So I had no money to cut the track. So I actually went into the studio and cut the whole uh, on some borrowed studio time uh, from a guy named Ray Campy. I, I went in there and I cut the whole song by myself. I played drums, bass, guitar, everything. And uh, and I and I sent it to Bear Family and they really liked it. In, in, uh, Richard White, so the owner of the label, said, can you make me a whole album like that? Wow. And so that's what I did. That's so the first album. I just did it myself like that, put it together, and then I sent it over, and uh, then they flew me over to do a tour, but they had never actually toured a live band before. All their artists oh were either, you know, people that are, are, are you know, that are, were dead or were just too big to actually go and tour for them. So, oh. so our first tour was in the van that that they had there at bear family that they used to deliver cds in so they didn't really know how to tour a band so it was right. like their first time of having actually live musicians go out and tour. was it the first time they'd signed a contemporary artist it wasn't the first time they signed somebody contemporary but it was the first time that somebody went over there that already had a following okay i see yeah so they were like wow your records are selling already so other people that they had put records out didn't necessarily tour or weren't really artists okay. but we were like a band and we were like, going to go play so it turned into like well we got to tour you guys you know right. you're selling records and so and this is all rooted in the sound that you put together as a working musician in los angeles right would that be fair to say Yes, definitely. I grew up listening to Honky Tonk and, uh, you know, everybody in California was influenced by Buck Owens and Merle Haggard, as well as Hank Williams and everybody else. But uh, that was sort of the way it was when I was growing up, hanging out at the Palomino Club. And, and, and just country music was huge in California when I was a kid. And it, before I was even born, it was even bigger at one time. Right. So that's sort of my influence on uh, the music and especially when we're talking about country music and that scene uh i mean whole books could, could and probably have been written about that scene because it was so vibrant um produced names like dwight yokum and i guess roseanne cash would have been involved out there and yeah just a number of names that uh, some of them came to nashville but um i get i i've always pictured a world that was part young folks who had caught the fever for this music and were doing it as uh, converts and then a, a big swath of sort of working class California who'd been we either had come west back in the day or were the descendants of those people and and really were just country music fans from from real life you know am I kind of right about that I mean were you well I mean most of, the, most of the people that uh, originally came out to California people from Oklahoma and Texas were looking for jobs yeah. right and they were out there picking strawberries and oranges and everything else that was going on and they needed to hear music as well, so that's why music needed to be there. And people like Buck Owens, who came out from Texas, you know, moved to Bakersfield, and, and guys like Merle Haggard, who were born in Oildale, they all started playing music, and there was a huge audience automatically from all the people that had migrated to California. And then their kids all got into it as well. People like me, you know, being a kid and seeing all these other kids growing up with Merle Haggard. And, Buck Owens and what, was, was country music something that would have been cool in your high school, 16, 17, 18 years old? Or, or, or were you who loved it kind of standouts? I was a little bit of a standout. During the time I went to high school, there was a little bit like there was a time where there was all bands like The Birds and Graham Parsons and all those guys. Those, those guys came before me. And then uh, after I got out of high school, 
you know, country music sort of had another had another run with people like Dwight Yoakam and Rosie Flores and people like that. Yeah, cool. Well, uh, can't wait to see what you got up your sleeve for the set. And you said that uh, you're hoping to make a record this year. We wish you all the best of luck with that. Thank you. Yeah, we, we're due for a new album. Yeah, we want to hear some new music. And uh, we're going to let them roll on with the show. But thanks a lot. James Infeld, we'll see you back here on the stage with your guitar in a few hours, in a couple hours. Sounds good, Craig. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for showing up tonight. James Infeld. And at center stage, ladies and gentlemen, please meet one.